video, how to go from losing kidney function to recovering it in five steps. Hello, Catherine here. I'm a doctor in natural medicine and a researcher in the field of kidney health. Today we talk about what really matters for your kidneys. Now imagine this for a moment. Each year, 786,000 Americans end up tied to a machine for life because of kidney failure. And yet, there is a vitamin that could have been their beacon of hope. A vitamin that could have made all the difference for them. So imagine this now. This condition, CKD, is not a life sentence anymore with the use of a combination of natural supplements and one vitamin you could be able not just to avoid ending up to a machine but to actually start improving your GFR numbers and this is actually possible the vitamin I'm talking about is strongly linked to huge improvements in proteinuria level this is probably the most important marker for kidney function. Not to mention that this vitamin is also linked to improvement in insulin sensitivity, blood pressure, bone health, heart health, and more. And well, these improvements are significant enough that they can delay end-stage kidney failure or even make you start seeing improvements in your kidney function. And do you know what vitamin am I talking about? Yes, it's vitamin D. This vitamin is so crucial for you that what I want to share with you today is not just how to take it. No, this is going to be a super easy five-step guide about how to make it work. Because for most patients, just taking vitamin D is not enough to see actual improvements in their GFR. You see, an improvement in your GFR numbers is only possible in the context of the right diet, the right lifestyle, and more. There are actually five steps that are crucial to kickstart this whole improvement process. And today, I will share with you exactly what they are. Are you ready to see them? Step number one, the diet. Okay guys, this is the first step towards a better kidney health and it's not optional for everyone. If you have been diagnosed with CKD stage 3 to 5 and your goal is to improve, you need to follow a kidney friendly diet. No vitamin is going to be able to help without the right diet. This is a diet that is plant based, as in most of the foods you will be eating are single ingredients, vegetables, fruits, nuts, legumes and seeds. This is not a vegan diet, alright? Some patients do have some animal-based foods such as egg white, for example. However, this is going to be a diet that's low or sometimes very low on protein. In fact, even if you are diabetic, whole grains such as quinoa, bulgur, buckwheat, oats and more are where most of your calories are going to come from. Starchy veggies such as potatoes, beets, squashes are also heavily encouraged. This is because you need to keep down your protein and phosphorus intake. Now it goes without saying that you also need to avoid some common bad habits as well. Excess alcohol, excess salt, smoking, eating junk food such as hamburgers or red meat. These bad habits are not compatible with the lifestyle of a CKD patient who actually wants to improve, alright? Now guys, as you can see from my slide, basically everyone with CKD not on dialysis needs a strict low protein diet. Very important, the amount of protein you must eat every day must be precisely calculated and monitored, possibly by a renal dietitian. If you have CKD, you want the help of a competent renal dietitian that is able to set up the right diet for you. Remember that this first step is crucial and missing it could jeopardize the entire therapy. Now guys, one of the reasons why only people following a plant-based diet have experienced an improvement in their GFR numbers is the huge amount of nutrients these foods provide. It's a fact that having vitamin deficiencies can cause huge amounts of kidney damage and we absolutely want to avoid that. But there is one key nutrient that your diet is never be able to provide in sufficient amount. And yep, that's vitamin D. 
This is why the second step here is going to be step number two, vitamin supplements. Now, when it comes to vitamins, the first thing you want to make sure you are supplementing is, of course, vitamin D. This is extremely important because a huge number of CKD patients are deficient in this vitamin. As we can see, up to 84.7% of CKD patients have too low levels of this vitamin today. This is extremely bad because it makes kidney disease progress faster. As we have seen, the lower the vitamin D levels are, the faster the decline of kidney function. Now guys, supplementing vitamin D is not as straightforward as one may think. This is why we will see exactly how to do that from a practical point of view in the next part of today's video. This is why we will see exactly how to do that from a practical point of view in the next part of today's video. Next vitamin on my slide is vitamin K2. This is a vitamin that's crucial to supplement when taking vitamin D, all right? It protects you from arterial calcification, a major driver of disease. Basically, while vitamin D is needed by the body to utilize the calcium in your diet, it doesn't tell the body where to put this calcium, all right? This is why you also need vitamin K2. Next, there is the whole B group. These are usually taken together and they are all very important. Each vitamin of the B group has a key function in the body and while deficiencies in these vitamins are not as common as vitamin D deficiency, they can still put you at risk. For example, vitamin B6 supplementation has been linked to better kidney function. Vitamin B12 and B9 protects you from anemia. Vitamin B1 protects the kidneys from diabetes and more. Luckily, you can find all these vitamins in a B group supplement or you can get a renal multivitamin. Do not take a regular multivitamin though because those also have vitamins that are dangerous for you such as vitamin A and E. Last but not least, vitamin C. This is something you want to supplement in low doses. Okay, up next, let's take a look at the step that for many people is going to be the most important our step number three is all about stopping what's causing the damage and in a large number of patients this is diabetes okay guys when it comes to kidney disease there is no improving your gfr numbers without stopping what's causing the damage so it's imperative that if you have diabetes you start by focusing on stopping it vitamin d supplementation is also crucial for diabetes patients because having low levels of this vitamin is linked to insulin resistance so one more reason to make sure you are not deficient in this vitamin now some good news science was finally able to prove that type 2 diabetes can be reversed with a diet and exercising the diet and lifestyle are the most effective ways of controlling diabetes long term and when it comes to stopping diabetes with the diet, it's all about cutting carbs, right? No, wrong! It's a myth that carbs and sugar cause diabetes. Diabetes is not caused by carbs. It's caused by excess body fat, especially a kind of body fat called visceral fat. This is why even if you cut sugar and carbs completely from your diet, you won't have any chance of improving your fasting blood sugar levels until you start to lose weight as well. This is a scientifically proven fact by the way, and it's also good news for people with diabetes and kidney disease. It means that you don't need to cut carbs completely from your diet in order to lose weight and improve your diabetes status. It also means that fruit and veggies are still on the menu and they are super healthy as well. Fruit and veggies are ideal for weight loss. I mean, if you need to lose weight, you must focus on those foods that are nutrient-dense while being low on calories. And this basically describes fruit and veggies. This is why if you want to be successful with diabetes and kidney disease, you must follow a plant-based diet. Now guys, if you also want to see which foods in particular are best for diabetes, watch my video up here and also down in the description. And in this video, I'm not just focused on foods for diabetes, but I've talked about all those foods that can help with the many causes of kidney disease. Save it for later if you miss it. Because as I was saying, we need to stop all the causes of kidney disease in order to improve. 
And our next step is going to be even more important. Number four is stopping high blood pressure naturally. Okay guys, as we have seen, when it comes to stopping diabetes, the main focus is dieting and exercising. And these two things are crucial for hypertension as well. Don't get me wrong, with a good low sodium, plant-based renal diet and some exercising as well, you can make a huge positive difference. But unfortunately, in some CKD patients, especially those in the advanced stages, lifestyle and diet are not going to be enough to manage hypertension. Why, you may ask? Well, because of the involvement of the kidneys in the process that regulates blood pressure. I won't go too much deep in this, but you must know that there are several ways in which the kidneys regulate blood pressure. The renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, sodium regulation, fluid regulation, blood vessel function regulation, all these key bodily functions may not work properly in someone with kidney disease. What's happening next is that most CKD patients are going to need to take not just one but several blood pressure medications. Now, this is where things get messy. You see, many of the prescriptions that are used to treat hypertension are very heavy on the kidneys. They cause kidney damage on the long run. ACE inhibitors, ARBs, diuretics, the less you need them, the more the chances of improving your GFR numbers are, says science. Now, this is a huge conundrum that conventional medicine is far from solving. Luckily for you, I'm not all about conventional medicine. I'm a naturopath, which means that I'm an expert in natural medicine. And natural medicine may offer a solution to this conundrum. Because you see, there are natural solutions to this problem that are strongly supported by science. First of all, vitamin D, of course. Vitamin D is not just key for bone health. It also modulates the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, which means that if you are deficient in this kidney-saving vitamin, ACE inhibitors and ARBs are not going to work as they should, says science. Unfortunately, many doctors just don't know this. And this is a problem because when a medicine doesn't work, you know what your doctor is going to do. Well, they are going to give you more of it. And this will make your serum potassium level skyrocket among other problems. So in short, always make sure you are not deficient in vitamin D, especially if you are taking ACE inhibitors and ARBs. Next, when it comes to blood pressure, also supplement magnesium. This is another super common deficiency that directly causes hypertension. Always supplement magnesium, especially if you are also taking vitamin D. Now guys, when you start doing all of these things, the low sodium plant-based diet, exercising, vitamin D, magnesium, your need for blood pressure medications is going to decrease significantly, which means that you are going to keep your kidney function for a lot longer, maybe also to see an improvement. But is that going to be enough to completely stop the need for blood pressure medications? Well, obviously, it depends on your stage of CKD and on the complications you may have. Now, the good news here is that there are many other natural supplements you could use to improve your blood pressure and rely less on medications. Garlic, hibiscus tea, hawthorn, even foods such as beets, spinach, and more. And I've talked a lot more in depth about this in my recent video. It's up here and also down in the description. Now, guys, time to see how to actually supplement vitamin D. This is going to be our last step, step number five, how to put all these together. So let's see how should you supplement vitamin D correctly. Now, this is very important. As I was saying, the kidney is the organ in the body where vitamin D gets activated, right? What this means is that depending on the stage of CKD you are in, you may or may not need a prescription form of the vitamin. For some patients, taking 2,000 I vitamin D3 a day or 50 micrograms in the morning with fats may be enough. But I would only recommend this to those with CKD stage 3A max or to those without CKD. And I know that many people on the internet recommend taking way more than 2,000 IU of vitamin D per day, but that's not advisable. You see, while rare, vitamin D toxicity is not impossible if you take too much vitamin D. And by the way, getting tested for vitamin D levels is something you should always do. Now, patients in the advanced stages of CKD are going to need a prescription form of vitamin D. 
These are medications called vitamin D analogs. These include calcitriol, paracalcitol, calcifidiol, and more. Only your doctor can prescribe you these special forms of vitamin D and the correct type and dose of vitamin D analog depends on your serum levels and on your thyroid hormone levels as well. So talk to your doctor about this vitamin. Guys, as I was saying, you also need to take vitamin K2 with vitamin D. For most people, 200 micrograms of vitamin K2, menaquinone MK7 to be exact, taken with some fats in the morning should be perfectly fine when it comes to vitamin K2. And don't forget to supplement magnesium with vitamin D. This vitamin depletes your magnesium and you don't want that. When it comes to magnesium, usually 3 to 400 milligrams of magnesium oxide taken either in the evening or during the day is going to be the sweet spot. You could take other forms as well, such as citrate for example. Just remember to consult with your doctor if you want to supplement magnesium, a bit rare some patients have too high levels of this mineral. And guys, if you still have any questions about this topic, ask in comment section. And I recently also published a video about the perfect breakfast for healthy kidneys. If you miss it, it's up here in also down description. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye.